We had the most terrible start to the week, but now things are looking up. But we do have questions that need to be answered. Why are we down to two guinea fowl? What happened to the boulder that Luke was playing with last week? When will we be able to reunite our two piglets? And how do we make the enclosure safe again so Maggie can move in? Where did our chicken go? Do you want to know? Then keep watching. Hi and welcome to our channel! First of all I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone who joined us for our first live. As nerve-wracking as it was, I think Luke did really well, I was super nervous. And if you guys were in there to contribute, to send us these awesome messages, to send us the questions that we answered in the live, yeah, it wouldn't have gone quite as smoothly as it did, so thank you very very much. If you did miss it though, I will leave a link in the description below, and if you want to check it out, you can check it out. So first I'm going to start with Luke, he is adamant to get that boulder down and use it. So let's see how he got on. Hey guys. So, last week I thought this was a boulder, a free standing boulder, and it still looks like that, but it's connected back here. So it's kind of like an iceberg. <laughs> um, it's not budging at all. I've tried with my big ass crowbar thingy, my bob. Um, I showed you these last week at the end of last week's video, the wedges and shims. You drill holes 10 centimeters apart apparently, and they knock, 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 and hopefully crack it in half. This granite here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's very not dense. Like it kind of looks like concrete, there's bits of, of granite. So I'll probably be able to crack this in half with my, with my hammer drill over there. But I might as well give it a shot and just see, start practicing, you know, so I can learn. I did watch a few videos on YouTube, but I think it's a bit more complicated than that. Breaking rocks like this is, is you have to really learn, I think, from what I've read, um, where the grain is and all this, which is a complete mystery to me. So I'm not quite sure, for example, this huge piece if I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. I'll start with that little boulder over there. I have six of these wedges and shims. I've got a 16 mil stone drilling bit. So I can't understand how there's any grain at all. It's just so crumbly and I think I'll try and just go down the middle. Nothing to lose but time and sweat. So that's 80. That's 60. Maybe like this. That one looks more like it. So let's just go for it. Best way to learn for me is just going for it. I think it's just going to crumble, eh? So let's see how this goes in. All right, that's one. This is fun. Hopefully they don't get stuck in there for me. <laughs> Amateur hour! And we'll go here. I mean, I don't really have enough to go the whole way, but we'll see how it goes. This is an experiment after all. We've got so much granite on the land and we've got quite a few walls to build in, in the ruin. I really need to learn this kind of thing and it's super fun. Let the musical concerto begin. There's definitely cracking here. It's going. <laughs> you can definitely see the cracks. Look at that. And here. And here. And there's cracks here, look. 
<laughs> it's going. <laughs> Look at it. Get out of the way, Luke. I also obviously don't have enough because it has to be 10 centimeters apart. And yeah, I don't have one there. I don't have one there. A lot of people have asked us to start an Amazon wish list, which we've done. And I've put a couple of sets of these on. So maybe I can try find some piece where I can cut off some big pieces. It would be awesome. I'd love to try. They're all the way in. You can see the crack. But not quite. I think I'll grab the hammer drill. Let's cheat. <laughs> well, nice clean cut, eh? <laughs> Even though it wasn't a success, I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty cool. Not a total disaster, I guess. I think it's more the the grade of of the of the granite itself. You know, it's like there isn't. I can't see like a grain or anything. I can't. I don't really understand it, but it all just seems to be like jumbled up. Kind of looks like concrete. So maybe if I find a better piece of granite to break, maybe it won't work. I'll keep trying. I'm not too sure about that bit there, where I would even attempt to put a line of them. And I don't have enough yet, so that'll have to wait. Um, but if any of you guys have actually first-hand experience doing this, I'd really appreciate some tips. Because, like I've said a million times before, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so the boulder is not a boulder, it's just a pile of rubble right now, but that is okay. The thing is, our week took a turn for the worst and nothing else really mattered to us. Our little kuni kuni pig, Peppa, caught a virus from a parasite and she almost lost her life. We posted daily updates on her health, how she was doing, and it was really hard to do it, actually. The vet told us a million times that the prognosis is not good and the probability is that she's going to die. You can make it, I know you can. The drink. Okay, open. And that keeps the flies away, eh? I'll help you up. One, two, Peppa. Up, Peppa, up. Clever girl. Look at her. <laughs> Clever Peppa! Drink. That's what we want to eat, the yummy food. Oh my goodness, you must be starving! She's eating the kale. She, she just got up and smashed into the glass and grabbed the kale. <laughs> Look at her. She can't walk, but she keeps falling. You have to move your little legs, Peppa. Yummy. Good girl, make an effort. Good girl. And now she is doing amazingly well. It did drain her of all her energy, so she needs a lot of sleep and she needs a lot of nourishment because it took everything she had to fight this. As soon as she started eating food, we needed to know a few more things. When can she start eating grain? Will Maggie be able to spend some time with her finally? Because Maggie is missing her so much. And when will Maggie be able to move back into the enclosure? So there was one way to find all this out. Hola, doctor. Boa tarde. Esta, esta viva, esta bem. Está uh, comendo, bebendo, caminhando. Realmente é uma lutadora. Um, <laughs> um, queria te perguntar algumas coisas. Um, acha que podemos nos reunir com a sua irmã? Agora ou esperar um pouco mais? Uma semana? Ok, ok. E também, um, ela um, já por dois dias uh, que coma de vegetais e frutas. Um, acho que podemos começar a dar-lhe alguns uh, cereais mistos ou... Sim? Sí? 
Muito bem. Ok, devagar. Ok, ok. Pouquinho, pouquinho. Comprei isto é desinfetante. É um uh, pulverizador. Um, depois de que limpio e é, pulverizo com isto desinfetante, tenho que um, esperar um certo tempo antes de deixá-la voltar. A secar, a secar 3, 4 horas. Ok. Ok, ok, muito bem. Ok, tá bem. Ok, obrigado. Tchau. Tchau, tchau. <laughs> Jets. When I spray, it has to dry before I let her back in. So he said if you do it in the morning, in the afternoon, by the afternoon in this hot sun over here we have, um, it should be fine. All right, so I'm gonna go mix that spray. <laughs> we just missed her coming to run because she does get the grain from the fridge, okay, just a little we're bit. We're gonna give her a little bit. They normally have quite a bit more than that. Wow, look, a special bow for Peppa. She's like, I miss this. <laughs> Your little body needs this, eh? <laughs> nice tummy you have now, eh? You're mm. so skinny. It was so in over here. Mm -hmm. yeah, are you tired of eating? You're sleeping a lot, eh? She's just eating and, and just going straight to sleep. Knockout. <laughs> She's like, what? Food. This is the stuff that I bought. Vircon Desinfetante Virucido de Largo Espectro para instalos. I'll, I'll say that again because I'm pronouncing it all wrong. Desinfetante Virucida de Largo Espectro para instalações pecuarias. So it's a viricide disinfectant, large spectrum for, I'm not sure what pecuaria is. Anyway, I read all the information, so I'm going to mix it 1 is to 200. This sprayer, which I just bought. So it says just to make sure you um, mix it well, so it completely dissolves. I'm going to mix it uh, 1 is to 200, which at least you should get quite a bit, I guess. 1 kilo, so 200 litres. Uh, this was about 50 euros. It was actually 54, 10 cents, but he gave me a discount, which was nice. <laughs> and what else did it say? It said, don't let it get into the water, supplies or anything. Make sure it dries before you let any animals in. One. Just fill it with water first and try it out before I mix in any chemicals. Sixteen litres, one is to two hundred, so eighty grams. This has to be stay out of the sun, so I'm just going to put it in the shade for now until Sarah comes back. And now I'm going to go take out all that gross straw. Yay, fun job. <laughs> Are you lonely? Come. I'm going to keep you company for a bit. No, you can't come out yet. You're under quarantine for now. Come on, come on. No, no. No. 
I did take out all her bedding, even though every time she was sick or, or diarrhea or whatever, she never did it inside. That's how clean pigs are. They don't want to mess up where they sleep at all. <coughs> I looked up that word pecuaria and that means livestock so that's my new Portuguese word of the day pecuaria uh -huh. who's going to school Ghostbusters <laughs> <laughs> I think school is the Ghostbusters <laughs> <laughs> okay Safety first, you know me. Jump up. Time to go home. All clean. Done. So things are really looking good. Maggie and Peppa will be able to be reunited in now just three days time but I do have a new system going because Maggie lives in a different place to Peppa so things have had to change. So what I do in the morning is I go and give Peppa breakfast because she needs a lot of nourishment still and she doesn't come out with us on our morning walk so she needs to have breakfast and I noticed that she was a tiny bit constipated so from not doing any poo she was a little bit constipated so I started giving her Weetabix with fruit and she absolutely loves it. Oh yeah, okay, 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 you want your more? Okay, so one second, one second. Oh, look at her face, it's so dirty. <laughs> Peppa, look. Peppa, look at the camera. Peppa, look at the camera. Look here. Peppa, Peppa, look at the camera. <laughs> She's full of wheat mix. 
After that, I go and pick up Maggie, who would be dying to come out, and she has been amazing. The first day or so, when we made her this new enclosure, because we made it really fast, she was breaking out every couple of minutes. It was insane, and we thought we we're not going to manage to keep her in. But now it's Fort Knox. <laughs> she's totally... I mean, she's tried everything, and she knows she can't get out, so she doesn't even try anymore. The only sad thing is now that Peppa's all there, she... she hears Maggie and she's upset that Maggie's coming out without her. So it's really sad and I really have to kind of turn off my heart a little bit while I pass from there because I can't let her out. We have to do what the vet said. There's only another three days after all. Hi, Papa, good morning. Good morning, my lovely girl. Maggie, come. <laughs> What I have, wow, turn Daisy. Wow. Now meatball. Okay, here for you first. Meatball. Come, Susie. Come on, Molly, let's go. We're only missing the pattern. Oh, well, <laughs> I was going to give you one of these, Molly. Okay, come. Shall we go? Let's go. <laughs> Molly, I don't think you want one. Come, let's go, guys. Everybody walk. Go, walk. Come on. It was really sad passing from Peppa's enclosure, but there's no other way. And now we left her screaming. She's like crying from one side to the next, but there's three more days to go and she has to be patient. And I can't leave Maggie behind just because Peppa's stuck inside. And it wouldn't be fair. After these three days are over, Luke is going to disinfect the place one more time. And then we are going to reunite them. Maggie. Susie. Susie, stop. Maggie, you're okay. No. She wants to join with the group because she doesn't have a friend. Susie, stop, Susie. Stop, stop, stop. Calm down. Calm down. Maggie, be careful. Be careful, Maggie. You are in front of... You were between two big goats. Yeah, oh, good girl, you sense them. You sense them, you clever girl. While I'm down here, I do want to show you what's going on and I give you a little bit of a chicken update. So it is not all good. I will start from the not so sad news. We have a bunch of eggs to eat now and they, the chickens didn't take to sitting on them. We tried, they were just sitting on them, laying and leaving again. The 19 eggs they were sitting on became 27 eggs and then they, I think it got too much for the nest and they started laying somewhere else. So we knew that they weren't gonna sit on them. So now we've got loads of eggs to eat, which is awesome. Before all the stress, we also had a day of super stress where we got two attacks. One from a fox and one from a hawk. And neither of them resulted in a death of an animal, which is amazing. It's insane. But when the fox attacked, he got one of our female guinea fowls between the teeth Luke, luckily, went out at the right time. The fox dropped the guinea fowl and ran off. And the guinea fowl was unharmed. And then a couple of, not even a couple of hours later, we had a hawk attack. And the hawk tried to get one of our chickens. And the feathers were everywhere, but the chicken was unharmed. The only thing now is that our chicken, Tiny, our tiniest chicken, is very, very scared. And we only see her in the morning. No idea where she's sleeping, no idea where she's staying. She just comes out, maybe, for scraps and stuff and then disappears for the whole day. So we are down one chicken, she's still there, but we have no idea where she is. But this is where the sad news comes in of our guinea fowl. And this is our theory and it is a bit ridiculous really, but this is the way we see it. This is what's been happening for the last two years now. Every time one of our guinea fowl proves to be the weakest link, it gets banished. Don't ask me why, but it does. And we've had guinea fowl fall over and twist their leg. They don't walk as fast as the others, so the others banish it. We see it happening slowly, like slowly, slowly. Larry doesn't want them in the group. He starts kicking them away. And then two, three days later, we don't see them anymore. 
but it's not only when they have injuries. Guinea fowl mate for life, and when we're an odd number, so there be three boys and two girls, then the boy gets banished. Or if there's two girls and one boy, then the girl gets banished. I don't know why this happens, but it's happening, and we're seeing it now again. We had four guinea fowl. One of them almost got taken by the fox. It wasn't harmed, but we could see signs that Larry was saying no. And then two days later, no more guinea fowl. Then there were three. And we saw that Larry was being nasty to the male because there was now one female and two males. And I knew this would happen. I was down here, one, two, Larry and the girl over here and the male over there. And it happened for like three days. I was pretty surprised he lasted three days. And then we didn't see him anymore. So this is our theory. If you guys have another theory I would love to hear it but this is what our experience has made us think so I think after this guinea fowl no more as beautiful as they are they're not worth it because I can't see them getting to an age where they're going to actually lay eggs and get babies I just can't see it happening so it's we're not going to bother unless these two last Larry and his girlfriend who doesn't have a name anyway by the way because they don't last long enough to give them names Today, as I'm recording this, it is Thursday because I do need to edit it, but you're watching it on Sunday and tomorrow for you guys, we are putting an, out another video, a special video on Maggie and Peppa's reuniting. Now, it's not going to be a fairy tale hello. I have seen how Maggie acts when she sees Peppa. It's not that amazing, but they're going to be able to do things together. They won't be as lonely and they can sleep spooning as they do, which is going to be so nice to see after so long. It feels like so long anyway. It's going to be so nice to have the whole pack together again. She was really missed. Thank you to everyone who sent lovely messages of support and encouragement the last week. And thank you, Corinne, for your super thanks. I will definitely buy something I need with it. And also, Carol and Jochheim, thank you very much for sending us all generous gifts. And Molly and Timmy say thank you too. They love their treats. <coughs> And crocheting knitter, I don't know your name. But thank you very much for the gift to buy Peppa some more papaya. She absolutely loves it. It is expensive, it's true. But she says, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is super delicious. And also, Colleen, thank you very much for your donation. It, it helps a lot because we spend so much on the vet and the disinfectant and all that stuff that your donation really helps. So thank you very, very much. If you're up for watching something that's going to warm your heart, it's going to make you feel sad, it's going to make you feel happy, it's going to give you tears of joy, then I suggest you go here now. Papa, look what Daddy has. <gasps> wow! <laughs>